To get approved on your next credit card, this is the first thing that you should do, is the in-depth evaluation. There's no point in applying for new credit cards and hoping for that application to get approved. It's like investing into a stock that you hope that it will go up, but not doing your homework on it. That's the same approach that you should have on your own credit. I'll be honest, I used to apply for credit cards hoping that I'd get approved so I could get that sign-on bonus and reap the cash back rewards. There were plenty of times that I got approved and there are other plenty of times that I got denied. Getting denied for credit cards happen to the best of us, but there are steps that you can take to limit the denials and having excessive heart pulls on your credit. So before you even start applying for any more credit cards, you need to answer these following questions truthfully and honestly. Have you ever had to pay interest on any of your credit cards? Have you ever had any late payments? Have you made any purchases that you wouldn't have made simply just to meet the minimum spending requirement? Have you had to pay the annual fee simply because you weren't aware of it becoming due? Or keeping cards with annual fees but forgetting to use the benefits for that year? If you answer yes to any of these questions or any of them hit home, stop applying for credit cards right now. Because the honest truth is that if you can't manage your current credit cards right now, what makes you think by opening new credit cards will change this? I get it, credit card bonuses is a great way of making some additional money, get free nights or hotel stays, and all of those perks. But the main reason why these credit card companies can make so much money is that there are a lot of people that answer yes to those following questions that I just asked you. If you can make a plan to prevent those things from happening, then you can move on to the next step. While doing some research on this specific topic, I did what every millennial does. They go to Reddit for answers. So while I was on Reddit, there's a great subreddit called Churning. This is a community that shares so much information about getting the most out of your credit cards and how to churn those points. So when I was skimming through the forums, I came across an AMA done by a city bank representative, so let's call him Bob, who would take calls in the reconsideration department. So if you guys are not aware of what the reconsideration line is, it is a department within a credit card company where you would call to try to get your decision reversed if you got denied. I'll go a little bit deeper later in the video of what to say and what to look for when trying to call for reconsideration. So after reading about 400 different comments on this AMA, this is what I found. If you got an instant message stating that you were not approved at this time, it's usually due to some sort of systematic algorithm that quickly scans through all of your information that you plugged in and just gives you a quick decision. So if you apply for a credit card and don't get an instant approval, this information usually gets passed on this agent similar to Bob. Just keep in mind that this agent that you'll be talking on the phone does not have no authority to approve your credit application. The person that you talk to on the phone usually only have about 90 seconds to make a determination whether if they want to push this to the higher ups to get a further evaluation. So within that 90 seconds, this is what they typically look for. Derogatory marks, negative marks, hard inquiries, credit score, and open credit. I know this is pretty general, but Bob says it's accumulation of everything. Bob also says that income is huge and score is huge. So let's start off with derogatory marks. This typically indicates some sort of serious delinquency or late payments. So when you have these type of marks on your credit, this represents a credit risk to lenders and therefore likely to have an effect on your ability to obtain new credit. Some public examples include bankruptcies and judgments. Other examples of derogatory credit items can include collection accounts, charge-offs, and accounts that are settled for less than the full balance. Next up, we got negative marks. Some companies, they use derogatory and negative marks the same way. But in the case of this Citibank agent, he reported that negative marks include 30-day late payments, 60-day late payments, past due accounts, and things of the sort. Hard inquiries are next. So hard inquiries are also known as hard pulls. A hard inquiry occurs when a financial company such as a lender or a credit card company, they check your credit when they're making a decision whether or not to approve you. So this typically takes place when you're applying for a mortgage, taking out a car loan, or applying for a new credit card. So with hard inquiries, they usually lower your score for a few months by having multiple inquiries in a short amount of time. Typically lenders and credit card issuers, they consider you to have a higher risk because you might be short of income or trying to get into a lot of debt. So when we're talking about applying for credit cards, it is best to apply for credit cards every few months instead of all at once. The next thing up is your credit score. This one is a big one. Just like Bob said, having a poor credit score is no way going to help you get approved for every credit card. It is just impossible. It's like trying to sneeze with your eyes open. It just won't work. 
A lot of credit card companies have strict rules on minimum credit score that you must have or else they just deny you automatically. So don't think by having a 650 credit score, hoping to apply for the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is a credit card that typically requires you to have a credit score of 720 or more to get approved. So in these type of cases, there's really no way around this. The next one up is open lines of credit. This really only matters when you have another credit card with that specific bank. Bob said there are some workarounds. So to get approved for another city card, they may have to transfer a certain amount of credit from your old card to the new one to make the approval process to work. So if this is the case, you gotta keep your old car in the new one as well, but this only really matters if you have multiple credit cards with one credit card company. One last thing that they typically look at is the accounts open within a certain amount of time. Bob said that during his AMA, they are required to deny any account that open up a new city card within the last 90 days. I am also pretty sure that other banks such as American Express or Chase have strict guidelines on their approval process as well. There is an unwritten guideline with Amex where you can only have five credit cards with them at one time. So if a credit card company has strict policies on how many accounts open or how many credit cards open within a certain time frame, there's really no way around this. This information that I have here really only applies to Citibank. Plus, this information was based off Bob, who last worked there in 2013. So it's really hard to say if all this information is still current, but it is very interesting to know because I imagine the majority of these guidelines still apply today. So now that you know all the inside information about credit card companies of what they are looking for during the approval process, now it's time to apply for your next credit card. When you apply for your next credit card, just make sure to take some screenshots or remember exactly what you put down. Because in a case if you do get a denial, when you call for a reconsideration, they will always ask the basic verification details before probing more questions out of you. They just want to make sure that everything lines up, so don't lie about anything on your application, i.e. like your income. They will usually ask you the same details that you put down during your application, which is your full name, your last four of your social, your annual income, your employer and how long you work there, your current job description, and all the other personal information just like that. So if you do get approved, then you don't have to watch the rest of this video. But in the case that you do get a denial letter, this is what you gotta do. Not all banks will have a reconsideration line that you can call, though the majority of major banks like Chase or MX will most likely have a reconsideration department, so don't count on the smaller banks to have one. So to find out the credit card that you got denied for has a reconsideration department, just Google the bank and the reconsideration number and something usually should pop up. And if something does come up, then most likely your bank will have a reconsideration department. So this is the exact process you're gonna do next. All right, number one, call sooner than later. The reason why you wanna call as soon as you get the denial is that if you wait for longer than a month before calling, you may have to submit a new application which will result in another hard pull. So which is not good for your credit score anyways, so if you do call a reconsideration line earlier, they probably will just look up your application and review your credit from the recent hard pull. So in this case, this will not result in another hard inquiry. All right, so this next step is to have some valid reasons of why you deserve this credit card. So imagine going to a work interview and you have to persuade them and tell them your stats and why you deserve the job. This is no different. This is the exact same process that you gotta do. So here are some really good examples and bad examples. You could say that you deserve this card because you regularly travel and you don't wanna be tied down to a specific airline or a hotel chain. A bad reason and what most YouTubers will tell you is to avoid mentioning the sign-on bonus. Because getting a credit card just for the sign-on bonus kinda makes you look desperate even though maybe that's the truth but it really doesn't help your case on getting this credit card. Also, when I was looking through Bob's AMA, he also did mention that the agency did not have any knowledge of what sign-up bonus offers that the person would receive if they were approved. And honestly, Bob said that he really didn't care. So another really good example can be you really want this card because you want the ability to get cash back on rotating categories so you're not tied down to a specific expense. So here's another bad reason. You want to get this card because you want to do a balance transfer so it doesn't charge you any interest for the first 18 months so you can just move that money once again once the intro offer is up. So as you can see here, it's really about the wording and how you want to portray yourself. So if you portray yourself as a money hungry credit card churner, then maybe that person on the other line will see you just as that and they won't try as hard to push your credit application to the higher ups. Number three, be nice. This should be a rule that anybody who has any morals should follow anyways. If you worked in customer service or any type of job that deals with any other type of people, then you know that being nice to others 
you're more likely to get the other person to help you out. So if you're rude and obnoxious and trying to threat the other person on the other line of why you deserve this card, just remember that this rep is the gatekeeper between you and pushing the application higher to get a review. Because let's be honest, the person on the other side of the telephone does this day in and day out and they probably have some sort of rule in their company that they could only be on the phone working with a customer for so long until they get in trouble. So be nice, polite, and concise as possible since this would be the most efficient way to get the most out of this reconsideration phone call. Number four, know your credit stats. This is something that you should know before applying for any type of credit card, but in the case that you didn't check your credit report before applying, there are multiple ways of finding it for free. You can get a free copy of your credit report from each of the three credit bureaus each year from annualcreditreport.com. This is the only government supported website that gives you free credit reports. The more knowledge that you know about your own credit prevents you from looking like a fool when you're talking to the agent. Because it would be pretty embarrassing to know that you got denied because your credit score was a 620 instead of the required 720. Number five, be flexible. Just like anything in life, and something that was forced into my brain in the Marine Corps is to be flexible. There are some cases where you have to be flexible and have some negotiating power. Here, let me give you an example. If you're trying to apply to a bank that you already currently have a credit card with, but the main reason why you won't get approved for another card is that you already maxed out your credit limit. One thing you can do is try to negotiate to reduce your current credit card or try to move that credit limit from the existing credit card to the new one. Because there are certain times that a credit card company can offer a maximum amount of credit. By being willing to split that operating credit amongst credit cards, you have a much better chance on getting approved on that new card. Number six, banking loyalty. If you're trying to apply for a credit card from a bank that you've been with for quite a bit of time, use it to your advantage. Because a lot of times you can be like, hey, I've been with your bank for five years now and I never had any late payments, so I have a great track record and I'm a loyal customer. Sometimes this just may work. Things to consider. When it really comes down to it, the more prepared you are prior to your credit application, the higher probably that you will get the credit card approved. Don't try to swing for the fences when you have no idea what's your credit score or your history. Also remember that when you call the reconsideration line, the agent or the rep does not have any power to approve your application. Some banks will just have a systematic computer algorithm that automatically reviews your credit report and approve or deny your application. And there are some banks that will allow the reps to push up your application to the higher reps who has the ability to do a manual review which has more say in the approval process. Sometimes there is some luck that plays a role. I hear conflicting stories about people using a reconsideration line for the same card, like one person gets approved and the other one gets denied, even though their situation is very similar. Here's some food for that though. You could always call multiple times because most likely you would talk to a different agent every time that you call. But it is possible that they may keep tabs on your call and your inquiries, so just be aware of that. Remember, the key thing when talking to an agent on the reconsideration line is to try to get them to push this information to the higher-ups, the ones with the approval power. In the end, if you do get a denial and you try to do a reconsideration but you fail, wait a couple more months, have a better understanding of your current credit report, and be more prepared for your next credit application. Credit cards are like buses. As one leaves, another one comes, unless you missed the last bus. But on a serious note, you have a lifetime to get as many credit cards as you want. If you want to learn more about personal finance and credit cards, come hang out with me some more over here.